Good morning and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Off the Press, where we take a look at the dailies to bring you all the latest headline and make sense of it with the help, of course, uh, and in um, a guest in the studio. Today we have Tubosu Akeju, a reputation manager. Thank you for staying with us. Good morning. Good morning. All right, uh, we have uh, some papers, Thursday, Vanguard and others. We'll see how many we can take in the time available. This day will start things off for us. Shiites mobilize protest in Abuja over killing of Iranian general. There are a couple of writers to that story. Police condone of FCT entry points. We also have NSCIA sues for calm. Be security conscious. U.S. wants citizens in Nigeria. Uh, that's it on your screen. Uh, at the very top of it, a little bit of business. UBA makes appointments to group board African operations. Uh, and then you have Nikon talks tough liquidates two insurance firms. You find details of that story on page six. And there's a picture of Imo state governor. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if I can flip to it for you. Um, he is um, investing. The caption there is Imo open for investment. Uh, that uh, seems to be some power moves there for the Imo people. We'll go read details uh, there. This happened yesterday in Oweri. Uh, top oil. Oil tops $70 over Middle East tensions. Um, I did watch a news uh, an interview with some a business uh, executive who was talking about uh, their opportunities for Nigeria to grow its economy, its oil sector with this Iranian uh, face off. Uh, what's your take on that? Let's start with that. Um, I, I, that's right. There are opportunities there. Um, it's just a bit disturbing that we're not very ready to take advantage of that opportunity because when the um, price of crude oil rises in the international market, you also know that the price of petrol, PMS, which is one product that we've called the subsidy different names, the price will increase. That means government will be paying more you know, to subsidize the product. So it's almost like a situation where you're making money from you know, the increase in revenue, but at the same time, you are, you know, it's flittering away in subsidy or under recovery or whatever we choose to call it. So the opportunity is really there because um, the tension in the Middle East is definitely going to um, affect the price of oil, but it's also very funny because it can sharply drop. Anything can happen and the situation is, you know, that, That's the business world, really. Yeah, so anything can happen at like, a minute's notice. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's good news because we will have more revenue, but I think that that subsidy issue has to be fixed um, one way or the other. I think the complete regulation of the downstream sector is overdue. Uh, but having said that, there has to be a systematic approach to that deregulation so that the economy doesn't experience shock because you don't want a situation where the price of petrol is increased because you've removed subsidy. Um, there's increase in the, the price of um, uh, power um, from um, you know the Nigerian Electricity Regulation Council. And then you know it seems like everything is just going up. What you're going to have is you're going to experience shock in, in the economy and there's going to be inflation. So we're not ready to take advantage of things like this in the international market, unfortunately. All right, um, before I take you on, on the big headline, let's quickly take note of other headlines here as banditry risk of faces. Uh, Katsina government insists peace accord on course. That's uh, another one on page five that you might want to read. Let's see what's on the back page. Uh, Tuesdays with Ruben Abate. We all know who it is. Or if you don't, go read it so you might get an idea. New electricity tariffs, questions. I certainly have one. The Pope and the woman he slapped is also on the back page. I'd like to read that one. I hope you will go read it as well. So let's take a look at the headline now, this big one. Shiites mobilized protest in Abuja. First, the police thing, stop them. first things first. The Shiites should again, as a matter of urgency, be undoed we care. Why? Because when you're dealing with issues in that are very that be touchy like this and the sheer number of the shites, um, that you have to deal with them very, very carefully. Um, and as you probably already know, um, the Shiites community is very strong in Iran. So showing solidarity to um, the killing of a top general from Iran is a no-brainer, I was expecting. And I like the fact that the IGP have moved swiftly, you know, to put necessary um, at least instructions in place to guide against this. But I think that 
um, 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 this case has to be handled very, very carefully. If the police is going to stop the protest from happening, then they are going to have to deploy you know, all the possible restraint to ensure that the issue doesn't degenerate. If they are going to allow it to happen, they are going to almost guide them all through the way to say, you're going to protest, fine, just protest, don't disrupt traffic, stay on this side of the lane. It's going to cost a bit of discomfort, but just let them, you know, do it. Like I always say sometimes, sometimes you have to give people, quote and unquote, blood. You have to allow them to do what they have to do without, you know, affecting other people. But it has to completely, completely be handled with, um, uh, with care. Considering Oh, the reality yes, is that because we might not have that kind of manpower. What happens? I think we have the manpower to guide them and be very careful with them. I, I, I mean, I would rather say allow them to, you know, protect. But, but you know, the situations like this, there will always be people who want to, you know, take that opportunity to cause some trouble. That's that's why I said you have to guide them very, very carefully. Well, let's hope that they'll be able to do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to take your, I know this is something um, that's part of your strengths here. Um, Insurance companies and Nigeria, what's your take on the liquidating two insurance firms? Is it, I, I think the first thing I want to say is that I'm, I'm not sure NICOM should be talking tough. Why I think not? NICOM should be working to build trust in the insurance system um, because the, the, the beauty of insurance is the size of the pool. But you do know that some insurance firms are not as honest as they yes. try to portray. That's what so I'm saying. They have a responsibility to also protect the customer who is buying. Yes, them. yes, which is why I'm saying that it should be. I mean, it's nice to talk tough, but let's get to the, you know, the real, what's going to get us results is ensuring that trust is built in the system. And for trust to be built in the system, it also means that there has to be cost and effect. So if uh, claims are not given to genuine issues, then there has to be sanctions and all of that. Because like I said, the beauty of insurance is the size of the pool. So for example, for um, health insurance is the how big the pool is, is how much you know people will be able to enjoy it. And in Nigeria, the pool is not very big. So I think that you know it's interesting to see that there's a bit of, um, the, 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 there's a, they're working towards capitalizations and all of that. Um, just like we had um, um, some 10, 15 years ago in the banking sector, where some policies were in place that built a lot of trust in the banking sector. So I think, you know, we need that also in the insurance. But I, it's, I must say again that the most important thing we need here is the trust so that someone would know that if um, I am paying for insurance, it's not money that I'm throwing away. One day, I'm going to have yeah. to call for that. And then it also has an impact on the economy. As, all right, as, let's uh, see as, if we can get through all the, all the papers. We take on Vanguard now. Uh, minimum wage, 25 states, failed Labor's December 31 deadline. Uh, that's uh, what the Vanguard is going with this morning. Um, Edu APC controversy as a shamanist would and Endorses Obaseki. One chairman denies endorsement. Factional spokesman emerges. Uh, 12 and 41 inside the Vanguard. This is where you see that story in detail. Uh, the death of the Lasso student. Um, Lasso students injured in stampede into exam hall. Okay, I was almost going to say uh, there was a Lasso student that was, was murdered by her boyfriend, but that's a different story entirely. And then we also have. Um, Saraki home demolition we will converge on Ile Arugo on Thursday. That's um, another one for you on the front page um, of the Vanguard. Currency in circulation rises 31% to 2.1 trillion in five years. Bandits adopt Reverend Somalia, 40 others in Kaduna. That's um, on the front page. Khan is speaking this morning. Uh, on the back, we have the usual sports stories. Uh, which of these would you want to pick on uh, first? Uh, I'll, start, I'll start with the issue of minimum wage. I'm, I'm very, very worried about the push and, uh, for this minimum wage because I'm strongly of the opinion that um, it, it's a bit of a misplaced priority. Um, one of the problems we have as a nation is how we spend the money we have. And I do not think two wrongs make a right. It's almost like the reason we are requested for this minimum wage is because of how fat the salaries and benefits of politicians are. I think that that's something we sh should have fought for. If at the start 
of this minimum wage. We're already having this problem. I can imagine what's going to happen six months, 12, 18 months down the line when some of these states that are not, you know, sustainable all by themselves, you know, how they're going to manage this big wage wage bill. Um, I, I still don't know what the plans are, you know, to um, to 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 mitigate the effect of 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 this down the line because we can't we can't continue to have an overbloated wage bill for states and even as a nation we will not be able to develop the pain the the excruciating pain of those things will come maybe five or ten years down the line where we have almost zero infrastructure and then it will it will be it will be chaos on another level so I'm, I'm very very worried about that and I think that. We need to really look. I mean, we've, we've gone past it, uh, perhaps, but maybe there should be a renewed focus by state government and everybody to Very find a way to, idea. yes, uh, increase um, generated revenue. Edo APC, your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's a very messy situation for APC. The, um, um, the, the chairman of the party and the governor, you know, uh, will continue to have issues like this that we see on the pages of the newspaper. I think it's just, it's just, you know, very, very disgraceful. We go to the Punch newspaper now. Um, on there, you will see Operation Amotekun. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Southwest to train OPC hunters, others, um, still talking security, uh, our inclusion not for economic interests, says Ghani Adams. Operations operators shall be carefully screened. That's Dawn speaking as they're talking about how we can improve our security in this country. Everybody seems to be pitching in. Um, uh, what's your take on this operation, though? Let's start with that. Again, another one that we have to be very, very careful about, because um, when you say um, under this Operation Amoteku, um, you're going to train hunters and OPC. Um, how are you going to recruit them? Um, how much background check are you going to do on them? How are you going to monitor them? What is the cost of training them? What type of training are you going to do to them? I think it's a very, very tricky one. Um, and I'm sorry, st I'm starting to call to question. It was, it was a very fantastic idea when it first, you know, when it first came up. Because for intelligence gathering, I must say to you that, you know, they would be very, very, very useful. And I thought that that's what they were going to be used for. Um, but there's the issue of them being paid 13500 per month. I'm asking my, the question, so what's that money for? How much involvement? Yeah, How many hours, you, um, you know? What's the modality, you know, of working? And considering that just yesterday or a few days ago, um, the police have said that they are not going to work with them for patrol and, and all of that, understandably so, you know, and all of that. But, you know, their involvement is not very clear, and I'm, I'm worried that this... I hope that this is not just um, a, a situation where there is just an arrangement, you know, because um, to to um, to siphon funds and all of that. It doesn't look well thought through. All right, let's. Uh, is there a translation to this word, really, for those? Yes, that um, I th I'm, 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 I'm not sure I will completely do it justice, but I know that I think Amoteko is an animal, one of the cats. From the cat family, maybe the cheetah or okay, it's the them, name yeah. of something it's a, that's yes, yes, of, I yes, guess yes, that. name of an animal. Is, uh, okay, I'm a tech is name of an animal. Maybe leopard or cheetah or cheetah or something. Okay, yeah. um, that's a task for you this morning. Go find out what that word really yeah. means and why they've chosen to use it as um, the tag for security operation. All right, um, at the top of the paper, you see Buhari won't impose successor. Presidency replies Bakari. Uh, oil rises above $70 amid US Iran's face up. We've captured that in a previous paper. Will enforce tariff increase as from April. That's this goal. SAT, R E A M B E T M D S belonged to Kabal. That's the federal government. We have the word again this year. What's going on? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go to the bottom of the paper. There's a picture on school resumption on the front page after the holidays. Uh, students and pupils are back to school. A uh, cross-section of that is on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Uh, just been into that school resumption picture. That's it on your screen. Um, three die, nine injured in older road crash. Family of woman stabs to death by soldier six justice. We're acting on Turkey's troop deployment in Libya. That's federal government tonight. 
Joe's Foreign Covenant, I think, speaking on that. Uh, teachers ruled in heaven or on earth. <laughs> well, uh, sometimes I had to run away <laughs> because I know the reward is um, far away. It has to start here. <laughs> All right, let's take your thoughts on this. Um, I, w I, I want to quickly talk about the power issue. And um, uh, it's um, for, so for 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 the for the issue already. There's there's a liquidity problem in the power sector, and um, there's again subsidy government is paying because the cost of electricity, um, the, the the amount customers are paying is not reflective of the cost. There's a huge gap there, and uh, there's there's a policy that government will do a gradual increase in tariff over the years until we get to a point where it's cost reflective so that um, we don't have a shock. People can easily manage it. Uh, what we know and what people constantly say is that if there's power, they're willing to pay for it. The problem that we've faced over time is the fact that there's a metering gap. And there's an issue of estimated billing. And I know that, um, you know, the, the, the um, Federal Government and Ministry of Power, they're working on a policy to find a way to make the estimated, because the gap between estimated billing and metering is huge, it's among us. And but unfortunately, we have, you know, a catch-22 situation here. It's a chicken and the egg. So do we, if we do not close the gap between cost and amount the customers are paying, we will not, the, the industry is not going to be attractive for investors. If the industry is not attractive for investors, we're not going to be able to fix the problem that we're having. So the, 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 there's a bit of a fix. And then we have this issue of metering that cannot be closed in a bit. We have a 4 million metering gap. That's not considering the people that do not even have access to electricity. So those who have access to electricity, there's a 4 million metering gap. And you know, the map, the meter asset um, 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 providers are working you know, tirelessly to close that gap. But you must understand that the process of getting a meter, again, is not a very straightforward thing. There's also work to, you know, to bring innovation into that space. So what is a bit worrying here is, and I say this all the time, that because of the age and time we have, government at every point in time must take policy education and marketing very seriously. seriously. You don't want to increase the cost of something like this, and all you do is issue a press release. No, there has to be a lot of stakeholder engagement. There has to be a lot of education. You know, it's, it's surprising. Before now, all you have to do is apply for a meter and wait to get it. Now people have to pay up to 73, 75,000 for those meters. Guess what? People are more than willing to pay. Why? Because they want to stop estimated billing. Yeah. Why? Because there's also you know, the discos are more inclined to give more power to areas that have a lot of, you know, meters. So I think that, you know, um, what is missing there is proper policy marketing and education so that people understand what the problem is and how federal government is. Yeah, I, I try to not to them. interrupt you then because that's like um, a real issue for Nigerians yeah. now in the back and forth. And I did say when that news came up about uh, prices, customers are not going to pay more, yeah. um, why did, wasn't that included in the statement that was originally um, brought forward? And you've you know, shed more light on that. Let's see what we can do with the nation before we wrap things up. A new wage, labor draws back in line with 26 states. That's on the front page of the nation newspaper. Um, we have Shiite protest to Iran military chief Soleimani's assassination in Abuja. The protest has already started. Um, earlier we saw this day saying that Shiites mobilized protest in Abuja over the killing of uh, Iranian general. That sounded like it hadn't started, but obviously it has, um, as the nation is putting it this morning. You might want to read details for yourself. Uh, successful story on presidency is also here. Lagos rescues kid from parents who refused blood transfusion. Harmonization of Naira rates likely. Devaluation ruled out. That's another one on the front page. Some story on sports uh, that has uh, Osimen there battling a Chukweze. Um, come to government free captives. Net ops for consultation with consumers before tariff uh, hike. Um, there's something that caught my attention that I want to talk to you about. This is a case that there is a particular set religious sects that do not accept blood transfusion. transfusion and the Lagos government cannot be in all scenarios at the same time. This is one a case that, I mean, a lot of persons would be grateful for. But what about the million others that don't get that opportunity to be rescued when their life is at stake and their parents refuse bluntly to allow blood transmission to take place? So, 
um, I'm going to draw a parallel. The jury is out about abortion, I have to say that. But as far as Nigeria is concerned, abortion is illegal, right? So as far, I think, as this issue is concerned, unless the person is 18 years old or has the right to speak for itself, I think that there has to be a law in place that imposes the right on the hospital to save the life of anybody at whatever cost it is against you know anybody's you know because you're literally asking someone to die, die. that's what i think you know well, let's hope that, that we'll get to that point and it is enforceable in the current reality that is Nigeria where we have um, um, a lack of data, a lack of adequate planning and implementation. We really talk tough, but when it comes to implementation, we still fall short. Sure. Let's see what this year is going to bring to us. Always a pleasure having a conversation with you thank here. Thank you very much. Thank having. you for coming. And of course, thank you for watching. That's it for Tuesdays off the press. We'll be back again tomorrow bright and early with all the latest headlines. I hope you can join. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.